out there. A good morning. Welcome to Saturday and welcome to Tim Newton today, our live program. It's going to be a weekly live program. And uh, I just wanted to start by, well, firstly, checking if you can, um, Look if you can hear me. Let's say there are two new emails. Yeah, turn that off. Turn your ads off. No, don't turn your ads off. What am I saying? So, look, it's great to have you uh, with us as we do this live every week. And uh, I wasn't going to be doing it here today. A bit of a secret. Uh, they're, they're actually closed at the moment because there was a burst water pipe. And so they weren't able to uh, actually cook food or make coffee. So I'm waiting for them to turn the coffee machine on. And uh, they actually were able to do breakfast for you, but it's been a bit of a, uh, a debacle here this morning. People, oh, why can't I get my breakfast? But they've let me sit in here and talk to you, but I'm all in here, well, pretty much by myself and you. So let's get started. And uh, I just wanted to acknowledge the people that have uh, said hello to us already this morning. Uh, we've got uh, Roman, we've got Lee, We've got Darm. Uh, what I am going to do, I'm not sure if this is turned off or not. Just excuse me for a moment whilst I... Okay, I can't do that. Anyway, hope you can hear me. Uh, Lee, who else have we got? Uh, we've got Gary, we've got Alex, we've got Darm1, we've got Scott D. Now, Scott D did actually ask a good question, so I'll address that uh, first up. And the question was, as a news commentator, did the pandemic become a bore to cover or did it bring forth rewarding challenges? I still vividly remember the July the 1st, 2021 sandbox opening as being big news. Scott, that's a, actually a really interesting question. And uh, so what happened on July the 1st last year is Phuket was the first part of Thailand that was going to be reopened in a pilot scheme, which was called the Sandbox. Now, as to why it was called the Sandbox, we never really got an adequate explanation. But uh, I was sitting next to a gentleman at the time. I use that term very sparingly. And the, the, the narrative was from Phuket that everything is open, everything is back to normal. And I was much more cautious saying, whoa, 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 hang on, hang on. Uh, there's no shops open. There's very few hotels open. Uh, there's only a few flights coming in. And there's this long list of restrictions. This is not going to get back to normal anytime soon. And, uh, well, it, it did become a, a little bit uh, fractious at the time because the narrative from the tourism czars here in uh, Phuket was that they wanted the place just to be open. I get that. But what they did by providing so much enthusiasm and telling everybody to come back and open up your shops, well, people did come back and they came back from up north and uh, northeast and they reopened their shops and some of them reopened their hotels. And of course, it was a dribble of tourists. It was a start, it was an important start. But then those people a month later said, well, where are the tourists? And they shut up again and many of them haven't returned and they probably won't return. Here we are more than a year later, what, some 13, 14 months later, and we're in a situation where it's still very quiet here. Uh, if you want me to put a percentage on it, just driving around, we've probably got 10 to 20% of the number of tourists that used to be here, say, at the peak times. So that is pretty representative of what's happening around Thailand. Uh, if you actually take the July numbers and you extrapolate that out across a whole year, then you would get around about 20% of the tourists coming here compared to the last full year we had of tourists, which, which was in 2019. So that's probably... Um, uh, OK, what, what was the pandemic a bore to cover? Well, no, it wasn't. And, and I, the reason I say that is because it, it just kept on changing. The, the science kept on being updated. The, the scientists and the doctors and the medical profession started learning more. And it was the most covered uh, pandemic of all time, of course. 
and there was never a dull moment. And of course, each country had their own way of reacting to it and coping with it. Uh, who was wrong, who was right. And we had some of the most developed countries in the world with some of the most developed medical systems who ended up having some of the highest rates of hospitalization and death with COVID-19. So there was a lot of surprises. I think you and me, a lot of us thought oh, in Thailand, here we go, this is really gonna be bad. But as it happens, Thailand, although it was quite strict and there are still a few restrictions remaining, Thailand fared fairly well, uh, surprising a lot of us. So there was never a dull moment with the COVID story, even though, well, it's still going. Although we are in a situation now where we're talking more about uh, variants to COVID, uh, the, the, the vaccine rollout, the way the vaccines don't work. I'd love a coffee when the machine's working. Sure. What would you like? Would you like a, tell us what you would like. A latte? Okay, one latte. Thank you very much. The coffee machine's working. Yay! Okay, so uh, <laughs> looks like they're getting their act together. Not their problem, a water pipe burst and there was water floating around uh, this morning here. They've actually had quite a few plumbing problems here over the years. Uh, take a note, Boat Lagoon, get it fixed. Ah, the sound of the coffee machine. I'm in heaven. So that's my best answer, uh, Scott D. Thank you for that. Uh, okay, who else have we got? We've got Stevie, we've got Transparent Media Truth, uh, we've got Paul Myatt. Good morning, Tim. Uh, question, Tim, why is the escalating problem of soy dogs in Thailand less a concern for the locals or is it senior ranks than visiting tourists or expats? Why is the escalating problem of soy dogs less of a concern for the locals or its senior ranks? Uh, okay. So soy dogs are, uh, have been a, an issue in Thailand, uh, less so in some areas than other. Now, I'm lucky to live in Phuket because back uh, very early on, I think about 2003, the Soy Dog Foundation was started by uh, Jill and John Daly. Now, I won't go into their backstory, but it's quite an interesting story. And they started the Soy Dog Foundation, the idea that they'd capture, they'd neuter, they'd rehabilitate, and then rehome the dogs, or sometimes just taking them back to where they found them, uh, which was their home. And that, over a period of around about 10 years, reduced the soy dog or the street dog population here in Phuket by some 90%. And of course, Phuket being an island, you can isolate it and you can control the situation. And it was very effective and it continues to be very effective now. So there's no soy dog problem here in, uh, in Phuket. Although there will be isolated villages, which uh, there, there might be an outbreak of, uh, of dogs or something. Now, I don't know if there is a surge in soy dogs. Now, Dharm, when you're suggesting that there is, you might tell us where you are because uh, I'm not aware of an escalating soy dog problem. Uh, I, I know that uh, basically the Thais just let the dogs go about their life. They don't worry about neutering them. In fact, uh, my cats, I had a problem finding a vet that would neuter my cats. Uh, I did in the end, and uh, well, they're now my preferred vet. But a lot of vets uh, are Buddhists and they don't believe that uh, you should neuter the animals. But I don't know if there's a soy dog problem in Thailand, but uh, Darmond, you might like to give us some more information. Thank you very much. My coffee has just arrived. And I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'm going to enjoy, enjoy my coffee with you. What did you have for your brew today? Or maybe you're watching somewhere where uh, something a little stronger is... Uh, I love this first spoon. Look at that, oh, the coffee, oh, I feel it doing things to me. That's great. Question, can you please help, this is from Steve Wilner, or investigate or report on a couple of personal issues, banking and car purchase for a mixed couple married in the third country. Steve, you might have to write to me. Uh, that's, um, I, I need to get some more information, but uh, Steve, I'm happy to address that. Uh, I'm actually trying to set up a situation where I have a, an email 
um, not my personal email, but a TNT email, where you can send questions and we'll do our best to try and answer them. I suppose I'm trying to eventually make TNT not only a bit of a look behind the news and, and a commentary on the news, but also provide pretty much a concierge type service where you can ask any question about anything and we'll get back to you. Uh, there will be a charge. <clears throat> I haven't worked all that out, but I'm making things up as we go. As I look at the date, uh, it's almost exactly a month since I left uh, my previous business. So it's been a fairly busy month not only mixed emotions, but just to getting back into a new routine, getting the new program started. I have a day job as well. It's all been uh, well quite busy, but all I can say is I'm feeling so good. I'm feeling refreshed. I'm sleeping much better and uh, in enjoying the situation. There was another question there. Uh, John Tim is rife with them. Tim promoted as a family resort too. Thank you, Darn One, for clarifying the, uh, the soy dog situation. Look, the, the best thing is that... <laughs> Do what John and Jill Daly did and start uh, your own foundation to capture, neuter, rehabilitate, rehome. That is the best solution. And uh, the councils are not willing to do this, or very few of them are. Uh, so a lot of these seem to be started by expats and volunteers. Um, I don't have a solution for, for Jomtium, but uh, if you think it is a growing problem, you do need to speak to your local council. There's really no other thing you can do unless you feel inclined to make that big jump or start to organise some sort of um, NGO which can uh, help with the situation. Okay, what else have we got? I saw another question that they're sort of flicking through very quickly and I do my best to get through them. A uh, question from Martin Fabiano. What is the hotel industry? Companies news say that their business is doing really well in Phuket and Bangkok. Uh, when I was there, I did see all this boom. Why is it that the hotel industry news say that their business is doing really well in Phuket and Bangkok? When I was there, I did see all this boom. Okay, Martin. Um, uh, there is a lot of talking up of what's happening here in Thailand. The tourists are flooding back. I just noticed one story. I'll go to it now. Uh, so I go through here. I did put some stories aside this morning. Uh, oh, I can't seem to find it. There was a story this morning saying that we've had over 4 million tourists come back to Thailand this year. Well, yeah, that's great and it's fantastic and the number seems to be increasing every month. Not like leaping ahead, but it is increasing. And it's increasing, of course, during the traditional low season or wet season in Thailand. Uh, but look, it, it's their job to talk things up. The TAT talk things up and they invent numbers. Uh, I, I get it. Their job is to, to market tourism and to make you think that everything is back to normal. It's not back to normal, but Thailand is, let me tell you, certainly well worth visiting at the moment. The restrictions are gone, the bars are open, the beaches look fantastic. Mostly, uh, people are still getting out and cleaning them here in Phuket, I noticed. In fact, there's a big uh, event on in Kata this weekend. If you are in Phuket, head to Kata Beach, a big festival, there's surfing, there's music, there'll be local food. So that's well recommended if you can get down to Kata. It's the Kata Beach, surf, lifestyle, something or other. Apologies if I got it all wrong, but uh, Kata Beach this weekend, today and tomorrow, definitely worth visiting. Um, but yeah, look, their job is to talk things up. But if you come here, you sort of get the beaches to yourself. Uh, things are not quite as busy as they used to be. Uh, so there is, I think, a, a greater chance of seeing more of Thailand at the moment, probably at a cheaper price than in the past. So that's just my thoughts on the matter. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, look, their job is to, to make things probably appear or sound better than they actually are. What's up with the Thai Central Bank? Are they intentionally trying to drive the baht to 40 baht to the US dollar? Why aren't they raising the central bank interest rate like all other central banks? Uh, Dark Brother, well, it's not so much that the Thai baht is, uh, is dropping against the US dollar. The US dollar just keeps on rising. Uh, against most other currencies. 
Now, if you're talking the euro or the pound, well, they're continuing to drop against the Thai baht. So it's not as if the Thai baht necessarily is, um, is dropping in value. The, the problem is that the US dollar uh, is, well, let's say it's artificially inflated at the moment. So uh, thanks for that comment, uh, Dark Brother. Uh, okay, morning, Tim from Airlie Beach. Hi, AJF. Now, it's a nice part of the world. Steve Wilner, sharing killed the feed, unfortunately, FYI, but I don't think I'll figure out technology um, with you. Uh, okay, going to other ones, we've got the big word question next to it. Uh, from Andrew's Lifestyle. What will happen in the next Thai election? Now a temporary Prime Minister is in charge. Will the election take place? Well, it's been a very busy week in Thai politics, hasn't it? With uh, Prayut chan who's been the Prime Minister for eight years. Well, that apparently is under some sort of debate. But, uh, yeah, he's been suspended whilst the Constitutional Court decides precisely when he started his term as Prime Minister. Was it 2014? Was it 2017? Was it 2019? There are three different dates that you could see as the start of his tenure as the Prime Minister of Thailand. Uh, Prawit Wongsawan is now the caretaker Prime Minister. Now, whether he remains the caretaker Prime Minister through to the next election, or whether Prayut chan returns to the job, uh, they both will have a pretty clear run. And as the Prime Minister, they get to call the date of the next election. It must be called before March next year, which means it could be as late as April or May. I think there has to be a 45-day time for the, uh, the election lead-up. So if it's called, I think the last date is the 23rd of March next year. So it could be in April or May. It could be called as soon as uh, December. Or they could actually dissolve Parliament tomorrow if they had a reason and they got permission from His Majesty the King. So uh, what is going to happen during the election? Well, my prediction at this stage, and we've still got a lot of water under the bridge, but the two or three opposition parties, the Move Forward Party, the Per Thai Party, maybe even the Bum Jai Thai Party, but even just those two opposition parties, Move Forward and... Uh, per tie, very likely will get over 50% of the vote and they'd be able to form a coalition in their own right, uh, elect their own Prime Minister or nominate their own Prime Minister and then see what happens. Now of course you've got 250 Senators, you've got two Houses of Parliament, the Upper and the Lower House, the Upper House, the Senate, are all hand-picked, all basically ex-army flunkies and uh, they would most likely vote in favour of the, uh, the conservative forces in Thailand, being the Bangkok elite, the army, the royalists, Palang Pracharat. Now, the Democrats and Bum Jai Thai are sort of in the middle of Thai politics, and they'll sort of float where the wind takes them. Bum Jai Thai, even though Anaton has been a fairly staunch uh, royalist and defender of conservative values, he is the person that introduced decriminalisation of cannabis in Thailand. And if it suits him and his political aspirations, he would happily just uh, float off to the other side of politics. Probably the same could be said for the Democrats. So uh, completely unpredictable what's going to happen after the next election. All I can say is it will be interesting. And I will do my very best to try and give you some good accurate analysis all the way through. Uh, okay, hi Tim, good morning. Glad you got out of that stuffy earlier. Da -da. Right, da -da -da -da. Scrolling down. Hey, look, by the way, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, this is all a bit, uh, a bit strange, saying good morning to people as they, uh, they roll past. Um, Mark Lanier asks, is there's a question? I'm looking for a question. Um, do you think the baht will be 40 baht to the US dollar soon? No, I don't. I don't think it's going to go that high. Uh, what else have we got here? For Scott D, I just renewed my passport. Flying my family of four to Thailand is just really going to cost me. Uh, it all went well, though, I thought. Yeah, look, at the moment, uh, it's very costly to get from anywhere 
to Thailand. The, the longer the flight, the more expensive. I just noticed a story. I saved all these stories earlier. I will get to them. Here we go. Uh, this story from Reuters. Uh, the US government said yesterday it will suspend 26 China-bound flights from the United States by four Chinese carriers in response to the Chinese government's decision to suspend some US carrier flights over COVID-19 cases. Some one or two cases detected on flights, so the Chinese suspended US flights into uh, China from those particular uh, carriers. So now this decision will affect uh, flights by Xiamen Air China, China Southern Airlines, China Eastern Airlines from September the 5th to the 28th. All this, I mean, there was a bit of a cheap way of getting from the US into Thailand if you wanted the cheap alternative. <clears throat> that was flying via China through some of these airlines. So if there was even a slightly cheaper option, that option looks like it's going to be closed off for a while. But pretty much wherever you're flying from around the world, there are problems. Uh, not so much in just the, 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 the sheer cost, but in changes, cancellations, delays. So uh, that, notice that story, and you'll find that at uh, Thai PBS World. The headline is US spends 26 Chinese flights in response to China flight cancellations. Back to your questions. And look, I did a quick survey during the week on our community channel, and the question was, well, the comment, the 77-year-old Prawit Wongsawan is now Thailand's caretaker prime minister. What do you think? We'll go through your responses today. Here we are. So there were five options. Same, same, but different. Nothing will change. Prayut will return in a few months. Status quo. Prayut will resign and Prawit will be PM until the next election. Was the third option. The fourth one. The military will stage another coup to solve the problem. And then the fifth response, caretaker PM Prawit will call an early election this year. By far the most popular answer was the first one. Same, same, but different. Nothing will change. And I think you're probably right. The second most popular response was Prayut will return in a few months. Status quo. I also think that uh, that is pretty much what's going to happen as well. Excuse me while well, I just enjoy my coffee. Have a sip of whatever you're enjoying right now. Gives me an excuse to have a read of some of these questions. Um, okay, Nick Day. I don't want to look like Mr Grumpy, but I'm very satisfied with the small amount of tourists here over the past couple of years. I'm dreading the numbers coming back. Nick, just between you and me, selfishly I have to agree it's been heaven. But at the same time, an island like Phuket, which is 95% reliant on the hospitality and tourism industry, needs people back desperately. And I hope they do come back so those businesses can get back up and going and people can return and reopen their businesses. Having said that, I think we've learned in the past that there are some aspects of mass tourism which are not that pleasant. And maybe we've, what am I saying, learnt their lesson. No, they wouldn't have learned their lesson. It'll just be the normal shambles. But then again, there are so many good things about living in Thailand. There is a small amount of reasons which make it, they're small things, thousands of little small things, but the big picture, the, the big items are still the, the weather, the cost of living, the food, the people. They're still here and they, they still make it overwhelmingly a great place to stay. Okay, so what else have we got? Uh, we go through, oh my goodness, sorry, I'm in a bit of a mess here. What have I done? Here we go. Scrolling down. Frank from Thailand, almost 200 people watching and 10% like it. Oh, okay, Frank, thank you very much. 200 people, that's just simply amazing. Look, I am very grateful for the people that have actually started watching this new channel. Uh, you've completely surprised me. Uh, it's going better than I thought. I'm actually starting to think about things I can do, given the support that I've had, uh, to sort of accelerate what I wanted to do with the channel. But pretty much, I just want to continue sort of looking behind the news 
and trying to give you a different perspective than what you're going to read in most of the media. What's with all the elephant-caused deaths recently, says Mr Ben's World. Are, there more frequent, are they more frequent now or have they always been around and I'm just hearing about them now? Look, um, the more you get the elephants interacting with people, the more you're going to get a few unpleasant incidents like this as the people start arriving and it starts to get a bit noisy here. That's good. I think also the fact that people have got these smartphones these days that we not only get to hear about them more quickly, we get to see the photos, sometimes video. So it's a bit like uh, car accidents. I mean, they've always happened, uh, but we just get to see them more often. We get to see more graphic photos. So um, the more that uh, the elephants are forced out of their natural habitat and are interacting with humans, the more we'll see a few of these incidents, unfortunately, at the end of the day, magnificent beasts, but they are still wild beasts. And uh, if you get gored by a tusk, you're going to come out second best. Uh, I like the show. Your old show has taken a severe nosedive after you left. I don't want to read that. Uh, as of today, is Phuket very busy now or a little slow? Uh, a comment and a question by Carletto. Also, do they have staff for the hotels and restaurants? Finding staff is a big problem at the moment, not just for the hospitality industry, but for just about everybody. I don't know why it is. Uh, everybody's saying, oh, everybody went back up country. Well, they can get a bus back, but they're not coming back at the moment. Have they all found new businesses? Have, have they all started spending time with their families, joining in the family business, opening up OnlyFans accounts? I mean, they can't account for everybody. So I don't know where everybody is. But the hospitality industry is, in some cases, suffering and not being able to reopen a lot of their services or a lot of the hotels because they simply can't get staff. Uh, as for the number of people, I would say uh, looking at the numbers and sifting through the, uh, the entrails of uh, the Himalayan ox, I would say that there is a, um, around about 15 to 20% of the number of tourists here in Phuket than there used to be. Going through places like Kata, Karon, uh, even Bang Tao, very quiet compared to what they used to be. Patong, the first couple of roads are sort of busy, but the back two roads, there's just nobody there at all. So, um, but you can still come and have a perfectly good time here at the moment. Okay, what else have we got? Have I missed any big questions? Is it dangerous for a Frang to venture out wearing a red shirt, says Lee Shepard. No, absolutely not. Uh, there's no problems wearing a red shirt. Uh, I was, it wasn't quite a red shirt yesterday, but no, there's no problems wearing a red shirt. The whole red shirt, yellow shirt thing is um, that that definition of Thai politics is a little bit in the background now. The, the, uh, there's no talk in the politics of red shirts and yellow shirts anymore. So there's no problems going out in a red shirt. No, nothing at all. Question, can you convince me to leave Mexico and return to Thailand? I get 180 day visa on arrival for free here. Ronnie W. Well, look, I understand that uh, there may be countries around the world where it's much easier to get an arrival visa or a tourist visa. But all I can say is, uh, although Mexico is quite an interesting place, uh, for me, it's not even a chip on Thailand. Uh, Thailand has got things uh, and the reason it was such a popular tourist destination, and Bangkok being the most popular tourist city in the world in the past, is because it's just exciting and unpredictable and different and quirky and odd and spectacular and um, everything. So yeah, the reason I would say Thailand is worth visiting at the moment is because it's Thailand. Now, you, you can't really compare the two. If you like uh, Mexican food and if you like the Mexican beaches and if you like uh, Mexico generally, then we'll go to Mexico. It's not just about cheap alcohol or getting visas or this being easier or that being easier. You either want to go to that destination or that destination. I don't want to live in Mexico. I could. It might be easier in some ways. But I love living here. So I'm in Thailand because I wanted to live in Thailand. Uh, you can't really compare the two from the point of view 
of just the, the, the statistics. It, it's a vibe. You either want to go to one destination or the other. So I'm not here to convince you. I mean, if you're enjoying Mexico and you enjoy the ease of the visa situation, then that's fantastic. And if you're a US citizen, well, for heaven's sake, it's much, much, much closer and e easier to get to and much cheaper than traipsing across uh, the ocean to Thailand. But if you want exotic Asian adventure, uh, so many tourism opportunities, so, so many, so many different vibes, a place like Pattaya, uh, an island like Phuket, smaller islands like Samui, and Koh Samet, and Koh Chang. I mean, there's just so much here. And within here, you are within an hour of Cambodia, and Myanmar, and Malaysia, and Singapore, and Vietnam. I mean, there's just so much to do here, and it's so cheap to get around. But I'm not here to convince you either way, just to say that uh, to try and compare them from just an ease of visa, or, or a, um, a cost of visa, I think is very simplistic. Do you foresee protest demonstrations in the lead up uh, or after the constitutional court decision, says Key J. Well, the protesters were out on Thursday, uh, all re or Wednesday, sorry, already with their placards and, uh, you know, hands on hips, and then the constitutional court quite unexpectedly suspended the Prime Minister, so they're all dressed up with nowhere to go. That was quite an interesting situation. I think the protesters are all sort of scratching their heads thinking, well, what are we going to protest about? If the Constitutional Court comes down with one decision or another, they may have a, a reason to go back on the streets. And there will be more protests as we get closer to the next election. It will be an interesting dynamic, but I always say that uh, the protests... Even if you're a tourist, it would be hard to find the protests. Yes, there were some high-profile ones last year that were in some of the major intersections. But, uh, you know, if you're a tourist and you see a big protest, well, you just do the smart thing and turn around and go the other way. But uh, they were pretty difficult to find generally, except for two of the three uh, key ones that say Oracha Prasong and uh, the MBK intersection. But the protesters know that uh, they're best taking their protests to places like the uh, Democracy Monument and uh, around places like Sanam Luang. Uh, and they've also been designated five locations around Bangkok now where they can go and protest peacefully and legally. And uh, that's been determined by the new Bangkok governor. OK, getting down here a bit further. Oh, my questions have just disappeared. Here we go. Excuse me while I have another sip, which gives me a chance to read some of your questions. Can you open a bank account in Mexico on a tourist visa, says Gingok. I have no idea. Uh, Tim, what would be the one piece of advice you'd give someone wanting to live in Thailand? Uh, from Mark Lin. Oh, good God. One, I would have a hundred pieces of advice. The main one would be to... This isn't one answer would be to be patient and sort of lower your expectations. Thailand is different. Living here is not going to suit everybody. There are some people that come here and just go, no, this is not for me. Great place to come as a tourist. Living here full time, very, very different. You do have to be patient sometimes. Things will not go the way that you expected them to go in many cases, perhaps in most cases. So you need to be understanding that you're in a different culture, that it hasn't been colonised, it hasn't been westernised. Thai people literally think differently. And it's not that it's better or worse or right or wrong, it's just different. So you do need to be patient and do your best to learn as much about the culture as you can. Learning the language will help if you're smart enough to pick up a, a new language. I'm not. I'm stupid. But uh, I do try. And I've worked with a lot of Thai people such that I have learned a lot of things about working and understanding culture and Thai people. So lower your expectations and be patient. I think that's my best answer. Um, thank you, Paul. 
Um, I need to find some kind of paid work, says Simon Marsh. I don't know where you are or what work you're looking for, Simon, but good luck. Uh, what is the great attraction of Patea, says Humphrey Peak. I think you'll have to ask the people in Patea. They literally, uh, it, it's a whole different community. If you go to the YouTube channels, it's just a quite a different vibe. But uh, qu a, quite a few of them are good friends. And they just think that Patea is the centre of the universe. And uh, nothing will talk them out of it. I mean, I think the beaches are crap. Uh, I don't think the food is, has got as much variety. I don't think the accommodation choices are as good. Uh, I don't think it's got uh, much variation between one part of Patea and the other. But people that live in Patea and like traveling there love the place. And that's great. Uh, I just prefer to live down here. I've been to Patea, I've got some great friends there and I look forward to getting back there. But uh, yeah, if you live in Patea, you seem to love it. And that's a good thing. Question, who was the most interesting person you met in Thailand? Says Mango Sticky Rice. Can I think about that? I don't know. Have I met some interesting people? I met uh, Tanatorn, the head of the Future Forward Party and will one day be Prime Minister of Thailand. He was an interesting person and I look forward to interviewing him sometime in the past. Oh gee, I met quite a few interesting people when I was in my past uh, job. Um, who else? I don't. Let me think about that. Um, the person I live with in my house, probably the most interesting person. I don't know. Let me think about that one. But thank you for the question, Mango Sticky Rice. Um, an ugly place, says John Brig. Uh, sunscreen. Uh, good boys go to heaven. Bad boys go to Patia, says Dam One. Good for you. Patia is a party town, says Poco Loco. Yeah, look, it might be. And uh, Sue was interesting, says Mark Lynn. Sue's a fascinating, Sue Altman, not only a fascinating, but a wonderful and hardworking woman. Good morning, Sue, if you're watching. Uh, you met the Queen of England, said Dam. Not here in Thailand. I met her in Australia twice. She didn't remember my name from the first time. But uh, yes, I didn't meet the Queen of England. I would love to interview the, uh, him, the head of state. He'd be a very interesting interview, wouldn't he? Don't think I'm going to though, somehow. Chiang Mai is awesome, says Kun Rando Farang. Uh, except in burning season. Oh, you'd be hideous up there during burning season. Never been a fan of the islands for living, but a good escape from the burning up north. Yeah, look, there are some great places around Thailand. It's not just Pattaya and Phuket. There's Hua Hin, there's Ubon Ratchatani, there's Khon Kaen, there's Chiang Rai, Bangkok, my good heavens. There's plenty of places in Bangkok to live in. It's got quite a few different vibes. I mean, it's uh, greater Bangkok, taking in Samut Prakan and uh, Samut Sakon and uh, Tomburi. I mean, it's uh, greater Bangkok is an enormous city of some 12, 15 million people and it's got some great vibes uh, in different locations. I mean, you can literally go down a different soy for the rest of your life and find something unique and amazing uh, and probably some cheap noodles as well. And you can keep going, going down a new unexplored soy every day for the rest of your life and you'd still never see even half of Bangkok. It's a fascinating city. Hi Tim, how's the weather here? That's an easy one, Kino Sims. Uh, it was raining earlier this morning. It's cloudy at the moment. I think they are predicting some rain over the next few days. I can't check my phone because I'm using my phone at the moment to record this. Um, but I think they are predicting some rain around parts of Thailand over the next few days. Hey Tim, are you planning to expand if you hit... Oh, that disappeared. Hi Tim, are you planning to hit... Hey. Thank you, Lee Neiman. Planning to expand if you hit 20 to 30 subscribers, maybe one to three staff members or journalists to help out. Whew. Now it all depends on the monetization. I'm talking to a couple of sponsors at the moment and um, I'm also trying to work out an opportunity for people to uh, not so much be members. I don't really want to run a membership. I want to provide everything as a free service but give opportunities to people to uh, 
provide some help if they feel so inclined. The problem with the YouTube, um, what's it called? Super, super Chat, which is basically donations, is that they take 30% of your money before the uh, YouTuber gets to see the other 70%. Uh, so there are, are some other options. If you know of some, please tell me. The problem is in many of the cases like um, buy me a coffee, uh, Kofi, and there's a few others, is that uh, it's very hard to get the money into Thailand from those organisations because of uh, Stripe, PayPal, all sorts of financial limitations. I've spent half the week going through trying to understand the international banking system. Looks at the moment though, I'm going to have to fly to Hong Kong, open an account, oh, I won't bother you. But uh, yes, I am looking at making some changes when I get some more subs. Uh, the monetization is going very well, but at the moment it's still a bit of a hobby. But I'd like to make things more professional. It's a one-man band, cameraman, coffee boy, uh, editor, everything. So I'm learning a lot as I go and I would like to expand my staff as soon as I can. I just have to take the steps uh, just slowly and progressively as I can afford to do so. Uh, I could send several interesting interviews your way, Tim, says Transparent Media Truth. If you're into speaking for heavily censored doctors, scientists and attorneys, not great for the YouTube algos. Uh, yeah, look, it's okay. I've got plenty of people on my list to interview. Don't worry. And uh, I'm very sensitive to the YouTube algos. Uh, it's okay. Uh, Tim, you are a very private person, but do you have a family in Thailand? We know about the cats. What about girlfriend, wife or children? Um, thanks, Anthony. I don't really talk about my private life because really it's just boring. You don't really uh, need to know. You probably really don't want to know. And uh, there's people dropping things and breaking them. We do have some people back uh, in here now. One particular person there I know is going to give me an earful when I get off this. What's the time? We've been doing this for 42 minutes. Another 10, 15 minutes, see how we go. Uh, I meet queens every day in Thailand, says Ian McNamee. Mas Mr. Mitch, ha ha ha, Patia is not the centre of the universe and I currently live here. Uh, the chairman says, I agree, Tim. Thailand is unique. What makes it fantastic is there's so much more to discover here and that's uh, off the beaten track. Chairman, you're right, it's great when we do get out of our comfort zones, that we get into a tuk-tuk and say, take us there, uh, or hire a motorbike. Be careful, make sure you wear a helmet, make sure you're properly licensed, but hiring a motorbike is a great experience in Thailand as well. Just uh, take your time. Mr. Newton, oh, Stephen J.L. Austin, Curious, why don't you use your full name? Why have you omitted long from your name? Okay, there's a long, long, long story about this and it, there's nothing devious about it. Uh, oh, do we really need to go through the story? I won't bother you with it today, but there's a reason I use the... Uh, the Tim Newton is actually my name, but I do have a, a surname as well and there's a reason why it's been omitted, but I won't bore you with it today. Uh, there's nothing devious or underhand about it. So thanks, Stephen J. L. Austin. Is medical tourism back to normal again in Thailand? Last time I was in Thailand in 2019, the medical procedures prices have gone up a lot. This is from Dark Brother. Yes, medical tourism is still a big thing in Thailand. Uh, I recommended to a friend the other day to go and get their eyes lasered at a hospital. Uh, my partner had eyes lasered and uh, she's very happy. And uh, your medical tourism is still a big thing here in Thailand. And uh, procedures are generally, depending on the hospitals you go to, quite a lot cheaper than you'll find in many Western countries. And the doctors, in many cases, uh, will be at least to a, uh, a world-class standard, sometimes higher, because there are some procedures that are quite unique to Thailand that they've uh, sort of per perfected. Uh, so, an another thing about that, um, uh, yes, for, for example, if you go to Bumrun Grad Hospital or any of the Bangkok Hospital franchises, you'll probably find the prices quite a bit higher. But you'll get 
a magnificent entrance area. You'll get people wearing suits behind the reception desk. Uh, you probably get a private suite with timber-lined walls. But there are some other hospitals, uh, some of them private hospitals, some of them public, where you can get really high qual quality medical care at a fraction of the price that you'd pay. But rather than going through an agent, I would probably recommend, if you're realistically thinking about a, a, an expensive elective uh, cosmetic surgery procedure or medical procedure, come here and do your own homework. I'm just gonna scratch my nose for a moment, excuse me. Scratch, 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 scratch. All better now. Uh, hi, Tim, says Dimitri. Uh, I'll be coming to Bangkok in November for five days and will then need to get to Chiang Mai. Can I buy a domestic flight at Sawarnapum Airport when I arrive? Yes. All the airlines have got um, agents upstairs at Sawarnapum Airport. Uh, so I would warmly recommend, though, if you know when you're going to fly, is to book ahead. Go to their websites and book directly from their websites and pay now. Uh, all the discount airlines operate with a very clever algorithm. The earlier you book, generally, the cheaper you'll get the flight. If you want to book a flight on the day of your flight, you'll pay top dollar. And if the plane's almost full, you'll pay a lot more than you would have paid, say, two or three months before. Simon says, uh, I'll be there from the 1st of October, so I'm free to assist. Thank you very much. Look, I have had some very kind offers from people, everything from uh, camera work to uh, a dog's body to doing errands for me. I'm uh, truly, <laughs> I'm almost uh, stupefied by the amount of very kind and generous support. I am uh, a fairly independent person. I like sort of doing things myself. Uh, I, I like to sort of keep my house to myself uh, and my family and the cats. So, yeah, I, I'm not probably going to take people up for uh, on these very kind uh, offers. I, I really want to build the business, uh, make sure I can pay the bills and then spend some of that money to improve the channel. Some of that may be staff. Uh, there's also problems of work permits and a whole lot of legal things that um, I just need to be careful with. But look, I really do really appreciate those, uh, those kind and generous offers. Geckos like air conditioners and walls in Chiang Mai, says M. Maranta. There are always plenty of geckos making that funny noise uh, on the walls. I had my air conditioners cleaned this week. Five air conditioners in the house. Cost me 10,000 baht. Now, I don't believe that they've ever been cleaned before, but uh, I was a bit stonked. I mean, when I saw the bill, really, 10,000 baht? Anyway, the air conditioners are all clean and working, so there you go. Uh, you are fine alone, says John Brigg. Uh, okay, I'm going for breast enhancements, says Ian McNamee. Oh, good luck to you, Ian. When will Thailand end entry mandates? Uh, there aren't any entry manda... Oh, I see, OK. Well, uh, look, I understand that you will need a ATK test or a PCR test taken 72 hours before your flight to Thailand if you are not vaccinated. Um, I don't know how long that's going to last. It is currently probably the only entry condition. Uh, getting vaccinated, of course, will solve that. And I don't want to get into the arguments about uh, that. Uh, so, yeah, also, if you arrive without a test, they'll do random tests. But you literally can't get on the plane. I think most check-in and a lot of airlines also require either a negative PCR or ATK test or vaccination certificates. So it's not just Thailand's entries, it's also uh, the situation in various countries and the airlines and the rules that they impose. Mr. Newton, I invite you to Finland. You can do a program from here. TNT Nordic, says Kimo. Never been to Finland. I'll go during the summer. I don't think I'll get there during the winter. 
um, I actually meet quite a lot of Finnish students here. They go to a university, a friend of mine teaches, and uh, I get to meet some of the students from time to time. Uh, nice, well-educated, balanced young people. So I like the Finnish. Um, okay, scrolling down. Oh, no, no, no. I've been to hospitals both in Bangkok, Bumun Grad, and Bangkok Pattaya Hospitals. All doctors and medical were amazing and better than any hospitals I experienced in the USA. And that from Andrew's Lifestyle. Thank you, Andrew. Um, Humphrey Peak. KJ, my question I asked, Tim was tongue in cheek. I. There's always this sort of conversation going on. Tim, the voice of God. No, 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 no. Let's talk air conditioners. Ours are getting clean today. Hopefully they will work after it's been a journey for sure as they are obviously smarter than me, but like me only half work or three quarters. Uh, I uh, actually talking about air conditioners and living here in Thailand, living here in the south of Thailand, it's humid here pretty much all throughout the year. Now you get to Bangkok, uh, they have more a bit of a dry season from say, November through to February, March, where it's a little bit cooler and certainly less humid. Then you get further up north to say Chiang Mai and they have like a cold season for a couple of months and it's much, much drier throughout the year. But down here it's humid. And so running air conditioning is a way of drying the air uh, and also it's uniformly hot all the way through the year. It's either hot and dry or hot and raining, but it's always hot. So um, the air conditioners you might find you're using, say, later in the afternoon, close the place up a bit and cool it down. On those very hot evenings, say, um, March, April, May, June, that's, you know, the hottest months. Uh, what I usually do is turn the air conditioning on for two hours before I go to bed, then I turn it off. I never sleep with the air conditioning. I just have the fan on. Ah, oh, another coffee. As I scroll through, Scott C says, bullshit, I will never get a test and they don't all require tests. Okay, fine. If you can find an airline that doesn't require a test, go for it. If that's the reason that you want to travel on an airline, that's your choice and good luck to you. Tim, get your Thai other half to arrange domestic biz like the aircon service and then disappear for the day, the bills will shrink dramatically. That's exactly what I did. The other half isn't Thai, by the way, but um, I had a sort of a semi-PA who got the air conditioning organised. I think there might have been a bit of a commission paid, maybe. Um, okay, Tim got Farang prices. Yeah, Tim got stung on that one. Uh, also had all my motorbikes fixed and things. They were much, 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 much cheaper. Okay. Too bad Thailand doesn't have XLIF lumbars fusion procedure yet. That's what I need and what I'm waiting for to be available in Thailand. Yet you'll find there are some places that do excellent procedures, but they might be procedures that are four or five years old. I noticed the, the place that does LASIK, I haven't had LASIK by the way, I had refractive lens exchange where they take my natural lenses out of my eyes and put in an artificial lens. Much like a cataract operation, but it's a multifocal lens so I can see the cup in perfect focus and I can look into the distance with perfect focus. So for a person who is 50 years plus, that's wearing reading glasses. It's a fantastic procedure. Took 15 minutes each side. I didn't feel a thing. But the person who that I recommended for LASIK, they're still using the blade LASIK where there are more uh, advanced LASIK procedures now, but very, very reliable, uh, very routine. They do hundreds of them a day. So they uh, do them with a, a great deal of skill. But that's interesting, there are some procedures here <clears throat> that you can't get that you can get in other countries. For example, I want to get a shingles vaccine. Uh, the shingles vaccine I want to get is not available in Thailand at the moment. It is, however, available in Australia, where I'm going in October for two weeks, and Singapore. The problem is with the new shingles vaccine is you've got to have two six months apart. So I'm not going to go 
go all the way back to Australia just for a shingles vaccine, so I might end up uh, doing those in Singapore. Chill Will, thanks for all that you do, Tim. Hoping to move to Thailand with my Thai wife next year from the US. Are large firms hiring foreigners nowadays like they used to? Is finding a job easier for expats now? I can't really answer that, I don't know. Look, obviously, uh, in particularly things like the hospitality industry, they will be looking for some staff. At the moment, uh, there's a dearth of staff. Um, maybe it's a good time to Maybe it's a good time to, 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 to apply for a job here. Interesting thought, I, I don't know. But do your homework before you come. Contact a whole lot of firms, get their vibe on who's hiring and who's not at the moment. But the hospitality industry, but you can only work in the hospitality industry at management level. You can't work as a, uh, a waiter <coughs> or one of the uh, sort of the jobs taken by ties. Excuse me. Kun Tim says, retired Ruan, I only pay 500 baht to get each air conditioner cleared. I'm cleaned, I'm in Katu. <clears throat> yeah, there was a bit more than just the cleaning. They were cleaning them and they were refilling the, um, the refrigerant that makes the air cool. So um, I think the cleaning was about 500 baht each, but they had all this refrigerant. Because I mean, those air conditioners in my house, They've been there for a, gee, probably about 30 years, and I bet they've never been cleaned. I bet. Uh, okay, will get in touch when you need any help. I prefer a cross breeze. Uh, so, something new. Do you sleep nude, Tim? No, I don't. I have boxer shorts and a shirt. Tim, you married or single? Uh, single, but married. Uh, I hear they're not even testing, but it's not on the embassy site. If you look sick, they might ask you to test, says Scott C. Yeah, look, I'll be arriving from Australia at the end of October, and I'll know more about getting back into the country, but you don't require a Thailand pass. You don't require a certificate of entry. I think the, uh, the TM, TM6, the old blue and white form, I think that's even gone. If you've flown into Thailand recently, tell me. <coughs> into the water now. A few more questions. I think my voice is running out. Um, where do you do TNT Australia in October? Perhaps a foreign tour of the convict country that the Brits used. Oh, Anthony. Anthony Ormy. Yes, I'll be doing TNT from Australia every day. I am trying to get all my ducks in a row, like making sure I've got good internet. Uh, it might be a different program. Might be a bit more vlog style, but I'll certainly be doing a program there every day. And I'll continue to look at the main Thai news stories uh, even during that time. But anything could happen. Tim, just be aware Australian passports can take over four months to get now. I've already got my, uh, my passport renewed about a year ago. Uh, it, it can take a while. No, oh, here we are. No TM6 form required. I flew three weeks ago. Thank you very much, Martin. Uh, so that's interesting that the old blue and white form that you'd be sitting in the plane and they'd give you this form and you'd be going, well, where's a pen? So somebody in you know, row E9 would have a pen and they'd have to share it around the, uh, the cabin. Uh, I always ask the, when they give me the form, I always ask them, could you have a pen as well? And they usually have a pen somewhere. I never give it back. Tim, can't you bring the second shingles vaccine back with you? and have it administered here. Roger Osmond, a fair comment. I probably would have to bring it back refrigerated. I don't know. I'm trying to remember if it's Shingrix or something it's called, uh, but I imagine it would have to be refrigerated and that would be an issue uh, bringing it back in the plane, perhaps. I don't know, but look, that's a good thought. Let me have a think about it. Still got to fill that form, says Nong Waso. Uh, nothing need walk straight through the customs. October the 1st, the emergency has been lifted and the council has been abolished or will be abolished, something like that. Okay, October the 1st, the, apparently, the double CSA are going to be disbanded at the end of September, on September the 30th. That's what we heard. As far as the emergency decree is concerned, 
we reported that they, in fact, it was the nation Thailand that was reporting that the emergency decree uh, won't be in force after September 30. But the Bangkok Post on the same day posted a story saying that they hadn't talked about uh, stopping the emergency decree. All I can say is, even if the double CSA continues to exist forever, even if there's an emergency decree, as far as you and me are concerned, it doesn't affect our life here at all. The bars are open, the shops are open, the streets are clean, the rubbish bins are being emptied. Everything is happening absolutely as per normal. So if you think you're not going to come here because there's a double CSA, a COVID task force, or there's an emergency decree, well, get off your high horse and get real. I mean, that is not a valid reason for not coming here. And I can tell you, there is nothing that they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis that affects me in any shape or form. Um, okay, thank you for that, Scott. Tim, you hit the 270 check mark, have I? Down to 254 now. I'm, I'm totally amazed. But thank you very much for those people that are tuning in. Tim, have you smelt cannabis in Thailand lately? Uh, I've seen quite a few shops offering cannabis products. I even uh, went to M. Courtier last week. M. Courtier, one of the big shopping centres near the um, Prom Pong BTS on, along Sukhumvit. I was going to the Apple store there and they were running an exhibition. And they were talking about these cannabinoid oil products um, that they've infused into hairspray and uh, whitening cream and body lotion and soap. And I can say, and I'm not a scientist, but the cannabinoid oil in all those products would do absolutely nothing to enhance those products whatsoever. And they're even saying that uh, they had products, cannabinoid products, that you could rub on your head to grow hair. I mean, really, are people that gullible they're going to believe some of this crap? Look, this is a bit of a... Uh, uh, trend at the moment. I think the big issue is about the stuff that people smoke and they get high on and they enjoy. Whether that's legal or not, I think that's the big burning question. Legally, and as far as the public health minister is concerned, it's not. But the genie's out of the bottle, the bottle at the moment, and there's certainly so many shops opening up offering cannabis products. Now, the police are totally confused what they're meant to do. And the Thai Parliament needs to urgently sit down and pass the laws so that people know what they can do and what they can't do. Because at the moment, people are just making up their own mind about what all this cannabis or, or, or decriminalisation of cannabis products means. Um, I'm in Samui, says Ian. It's a valid reason I'm not on a high horse. I just followed the news, thought it was a good news. Um, John Brigg, keep those immunities boosted and we'll be fine. Look at history about people. Let's get to 200 likes. Yeah, let's get to 200 likes. I'm going to be on for... Oh, I've got to go. Time to go. Um, Tim, did Brungmurun grad's eye doctors try to rip me off by quoting me $10,000 for both eye lens replacements like your lens replacement from Dark Brother? Okay. So I paid 80,000 baht. 80,000 baht is how many US dollars? Uh, just over two, two and a half thousand dollars? So it was two and a half thousand dollars per eye. US dollars. 80,000 baht, you work it out, per eye. I think that's still the price. And it was done by Dr. Captain at the Bangkok Hospital in Phuket. So what's that, uh, $5,000 was the best decision I ever made in my life. And um, I don't have to wear reading glasses. Uh, as I said, I, I've got focus from here to infinity. Uh, I get a little bit of watery eyes uh, sometimes um, as a part of hay fever. But generally, uh, it's been very, very good. There was no pain whatsoever, and the recovery was almost instantaneous. Have a great weekend, guys, says Dan. One boom, boom, grad is the best, says John. I love your live chat, says Simon. Detroit Dan says 2,285. So it was 2,285 baht, uh, dollars 
per eye. So thank you very much to uh, Carletto as well. You're about 2,230,000 2, US dollars per eye to get uh, my lenses exchanged with a multifocal lens. If you just get a single focal lens like a cataract operation, that is much cheaper. But to get the multifocal lenses, I think it was a Zeiss lens, yes, it cost $2,200 per eye. Okay, can you tell me uh, about your journey with BPH, enlarged pr prostate? Uh, okay, so I'm going to be doing an interview with Dr. Sunchai at BNH Hospital in a couple of weeks uh, about benign prostrate, prostate, in, prostrate, prostate enlargement. Always say that wrong. Uh, so it's uh, or benign prostate, prostate hyperplasia is the other word, and it's something that confronts a lot of uh, men my age, and a very serious topic. So um, we'll be talking about that whilst you squirm in your seats in a couple of weeks, because an important topic to cover, and some new treatments now available here in Thailand that uh, can relieve the situation. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, can tourists toke weed? Probably at the moment, uh, they probably did before, uh, probably more likely to do it now, it's certainly more available now, and people waving um, it around in people's faces. So, uh, yeah, look, just proceed with caution with all that because whilst the police don't have precise guidelines as to what they can and can't do as far as arrests or warnings are concerned, they could be inclined to uh, hit you for a bit of money if you're not careful. Uh, two two thousand dollars, yes, two thousand US dollars. A uh, two hundred and two likes, yay! And with that, I'll, my voice is almost gone. I'm so appreciative of you dropping in to share a coffee with me, and uh, I'm off to another meeting. Uh, it's going to be a lovely Saturday here in Phuket. Hope you have a fantastic weekend wherever you are. I'll be back on Monday with uh, TNT. Get it right, Tim. It's Tim Newton today. And I'll keep on saying the other one for a while, I'm sure, but it's a Freudian slip. But it's been great to have you with us, and uh, thank you for all your support, and we look forward to doing it on Monday. I'm going to have tomorrow off. Hope you do too. See you later.